Hey guys, it's Max. Apple just announced their iPhone 8 and iPhone 10s. This is not an iPhone 8, this is an iPhone 7 Plus, but I will have an iPhone 8 as soon as it's available on September 22nd, and we will be taking a look at its uh, video footage and maybe doing some comparison tests. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and don't forget to enable those notifications. Now, why are we talking about iPhones on this channel where we typically talk about photography and video? Well, a huge selling point, at least to me, is that the new iPhones will shoot 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. Now, I've already seen multiple people ask online, how is it that an iPhone can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080 at 240 frames per second, which is crazy, but the majority of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras can't. So what is the simplest answer? And if I just wanna say it one way very simply, it's the processor, the actual CPU that is inside of these cameras. So these camera companies, when they're making a camera, they're focusing on the autofocusing, different features, and they buy a CPU from some type of manufacturer. Now, what Apple uh, does and why their phones can be shooting at 4K60 is because the processor is insanely powerful. The latest processor in the new iPhone is gonna be more powerful than the 2017 just newly released 13-inch MacBook Pros uh, with the i7 Intel processor. So that is insane how powerful they're getting these processors and graphics all in one unit. So um, I have these cameras set up here so just to illustrate why processors matter. And we rarely talk about processors and cameras. We just look at specs, what the camera can do, what it can't do, does it overheat, does it not overheat but so much has to do with the processor. Uh, before I talk about these cameras, uh, I'll just mention on the GoPro side. So this is my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. I did not upgrade to the GoPro Hero 4 because I bought this Yi 4K. Why did I do that? Well, the GoPro 4 shot 4K at 24 or 30 frames per second, but the battery life sucked and it would overheat if it's warm outside and you're shooting 4K video. Why did it do that? Well, it's the processor. So the processor was inefficient, it created a lot of heat, it drained a lot of battery, and the camera would overheat because of that. So the Yi 4K camera uses a newer version of that processor and a newer version of a Sony sensor inside of it, and it has much, much better battery life and it does not overheat. Well, the way processors work is um, as time progresses and the technology gets better, the processors will either use less power or they will get more powerful, or typically both. So the newer version, it uses less power, and it, uh, which means it has less heat, so it's not gonna overheat, and it also gets better battery life, which is why this thing can uh, record 4K and do it well. And even the, this Aki camera that I'm gonna have a review video on soon, this thing's 70 bucks, it can now record 4K, which is kind of technology and processing power trickled down. I'll put a link to this guy in the video description. So, so you guys can see as we're getting better processors, we're able to do more and do it better with less heat and less battery usage. Now I have these cameras set up here to kind of illustrate the difference. So this is a GH5, it can do 4K at 60, and 1080 at 180 frames per second. So this is the closest to the iPhone. It does have a powerful processor and it, and it uses the full sensor when, it record, when it's recording, it does not crop in, meaning it has enough processing power to read all that data and downsample it. Now, if you guys remember the GH4, it could not do that. If you're gonna be recording 4K, you actually have to crop into uh, the sensor to record 4K because the processor, the CPU was not powerful enough. Um, and then on top of that, I don't have a Canon here, but the 5D Mark IV, it crops in a lot. It uses about the same sensor as a, as a Panasonic Micro Four Thirds, but it's a full frame camera. That's because the processor that they put in there is not powerful enough to get all that data. So they literally just read a small portion of the sensor. And the reason why it records into Motion JPEG, which is like a 20 year old codec, is because the processor is not powerful enough uh, to record into M.2 H.264 or MP4 formats. So processors matter a ton. Couple more examples for you. The A6500 will do a full sensor readout, so 6K into 4K, but only at 24 frames per second. If you go to 30, it actually has to punch in because the processor is not powerful enough and obviously is not gonna be doing 4K at 60. Now, this camera here might look weird to you if you guys haven't been following my channel for too long, but this is a Sony uh, Samsung, <laughs> which is no longer in the business. This is a Samsung NX1. This camera is about three years old. It came out shortly after the GH4, 
But what it did is it had an APS-C sensor and it read 6.5K more than even the A6500s or like the A9. 6.5K, full sensor, it would not punch in at all. It would take all that data and it would put it into a 4K video. Uh, so the video is beautiful from this camera, very detailed. Uh, basically, it's slightly more detailed than the A6500. Um, and if you're shooting 4K30, it would not punch in because it had enough processing power three-year-old camera. And same thing, 1080 at 120, it would not punch in because I had enough processing power. So as you guys can see, if you wanna be uh, recording re a video, you wanna be reading out sensors, you wanna be taking all that data and uh, encoding it, you need a powerful processor. So we talked about power, what about heat? Well, everybody knows that the Sony cameras are notorious for overheating and it sucks. I, it, it really sucks. So this is the A6500 or A63. I'm recording with the A6500. And even the A9 and the A7R2 and A7S2, depending on which model you have and how long you're recording ambient temps, they will get hot and overheat. That is also because of the processors. They're using older processors that are not as efficient. And I've been waiting for new models to come out for them to get new processors that are gonna be more efficient, which is gonna improve rolling shutter, which is another issue that they have and it's gonna reduce heat, making it possible for these cameras to not overheat when you're recording 4K. Sony hasn't done it yet, hopefully they will do it soon, especially if they put out like an A7S 3 or A9S that could do 4K 60, then they'll have to have a more powerful, more efficient, newer processor, reducing heat. So yes, we need more powerful processors, and the reason why this cell phone or the newer version of the cell phone can record 4K 60 and 1080p at 240 frames per second mainly is because it has an ultra powerful processor built in and cell phones are uh, the technology is improving so fast there's so much money and so much development in that market that they're able to just keep cranking out and uh, improving the processors and improving the video uh, recording capabilities so hopefully some of these cameras start uh, camera companies start investing in higher end or modern newer cpus that have more power so that they can minimize the heat and improve the recording capabilities. Um, so Samsung did it because they had a uh, smartphone division, so they grabbed their latest and greatest, put it in here, and made this an incredibly capable camera. I wish Samsung was still in the business because we'd have 4K60 recording you know, long before even the GH5 had that. So if you guys have any questions, ask in the comment section below. Hopefully this video helped explain it. Now there are a little bit, there's a little bit more to it. Of course, the sensor has to be capable of being read out fast enough and uh, stuff like that. And you have to be able to record the data fast enough. Uh, but like I said, the easiest answer is the CPUs are just not capable of doing that or they'll just get too hot and they'll overheat really quickly so they can't use them for that reason. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max. Once again, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on future videos and I will see you in the next one.